the poopy stuff. Sure. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 170 for Thursday, the 19th of April, 2018. This is the show where two lifelong friends celebrate all things geek and uh, screw it, we're just going to go guest list because apparently we can't coordinate for shit, so <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Oh man, it's Thursday. I'm happy. It's Ritual Misery. Guest or no guest, I love doing this show, and here we are. What's yeah. up, man? Um, it's it's been a very very busy, 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 busy. Can I say busy enough? Busy, 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 busy week. Um, I'm I'm just now noticing that there are uh, there's little icons in the chat for who has the highest uh, total on the 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 donations. Oh yeah, um, like Mbeam has a one, and Hot Beverages has a two, and Deuce Gone Wild has a three. I'm guessing that's Deuce, what that means. Hey, Deuce is three. I thought uh, Deuce was is Deuce. I'm confused. Yeah, I, hey, it, it's Twitch. It's not supposed to make sense. How the fuck have you been, dude? I'm good. Everybody can everybody can join the fun live every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Central. Twitch TV slash Ritual Misery. Yeah, and maybe you can get a badge. Um, uh, or not. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of having a, 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 I don't know, we're we're having fun over here. Uh, dude, I, do, do you watch anime, like, ever? Only when I'm forced to at gunpoint by my kids. <laughs> and, um, and of the three, of the three um, uh, properties of that sentence, two of them are true. Gotcha. Uh, I'm not going to guess which ones. You probably shouldn't. Uh, I'm in Alaska. It's weird up here. <laughs> man, I used to I used to like anime a uh, long time ago, like like Akira or Akira, however you choose to pronounce it. Uh, it's a classic. Mm-hmm, sure. uh, there's some old old stuff that I that I like, and yeah, every now know. and then I'll I'll, I'll catch something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, something was brought to my attention Syphilis. called One One Punch Man. Have you ever heard of this? It sounds familiar. Yeah, it's actually as in, when, when when I say familiar, it sounds like something I've previously ignored. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> I'm curious who in the chat has watched One Punch Man. It's actually playing on Netflix right now. It's only 10 episodes. They're like mm. 20, 25 minutes a piece. So wouldn't it be 10 so Punch like a, Man? Say what? Wouldn't that be 10 Punch Man? I mean, well, if you add up all the times that he punches. Um, no, but see, the thing is, he's a, a superhero, a reluctant superhero, kind of just a, a bored guy that just superheroes for a hobby, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, it, but his power is that he can kill anything with one punch. Hmm. So there's these like giant kaiju attacking the city and he just runs out there and he talks some shit like Spider-Man style for a little bit. And then he just runs up and punches the thing. This thing is, you know, it's like 30 stories tall or whatever. Just runs up and punches it and it dies. It's a... Uh, that didn't seem like a whole lot of uh, story development. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I watched the first episode, and uh, I'm kind of in the debate. Um, am I going to keep going? <laughs> am I going to finish this? Because I've only got like four hours left of it. Mm. <laughs> uh, so so poorly drawn characters, in, in my opinion, um, I'll take all the heat for it, and poorly drawn characters uh, uh, suffering from superhero complex uh, uh, punch kaiju uh, only a single time, so it's not even really a fight, and then th- <laughs> and that's it. Like I, and it's not always kaiju. Sometimes it's just like a, a like a man size. I've built. I've had turds more complex than that. <laughs> yeah, I don't with, know. Everybody with more of a in story. the chat. Everyone in the chat in, is screaming at me. Apparently, everyone has seen it and everyone loves it. So I, I think I'm gonna go ahead and 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 run through it probably this week. But, just to get it out yeah. of the way, get over with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I'll 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 provide my commentary next week on it. Yeah, I mm, as soon as you said uh, as soon as you said anime, I was like, yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, that, yeah, I figured I'd set it up uh, the, a little. Bit. So in, uh, the only anime I've ever enjoyed are two things. One was uh, the original Speed Racer cartoon. Well, the Amer- the original Americanized Speed Racer cartoon. Okay, mm-hmm. because I know there's like an older version in Japan that was like way out of my league, but I enjoyed that, and that was because I I thought it was just stupid, but it's fun to watch when I was getting ready for school. And 
And the other one is, uh, um, oh shit, what is it called? Sword Art Online? I think oh, it's called. okay. I've yeah. only seen like maybe 20 minutes of that, but I actually thought that was fairly engaging and interesting and had a decent storyline behind it. I have no idea how it ended, but I'll watch that eventually. That's on my list. I highly, okay, so if, if, you, if, if you're at least open to the idea of anime, I highly suggest Cowboy Bebop. It's mm. basically Firefly. Oh, nice. Anime. Okay. And it is. Does really uh good. does does uh, Avatar count as anime or is that just cartoon? Um, I mean, it, it, it kind of skirts that on, line, right? Yeah, it depends on who you ask. I mean, it's not it's not Japanese produced, so right. some people would say no. Like the purists would say no, but it's kind of in the anime style at least. Okay, well, I like that. So that was pretty yeah, cool. That's one of the greatest things that's ever been I, made. I didn't, I didn't finish it, but I, I liked what I saw before I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, and it's worth finishing, dude. It is so good. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, other things coming out that that look pretty great. The new Deadpool trailer dropped today. The final Deadpool. Oh, 2 really? Trailer. Yes. Okay, so now I have beef. How With did Deadpool? you wait until just now to tell me that the Deadpool trailer came out? Like you've you've known all day, right? No, I haven't actually. Wait, I, wait, wait. I knew I knew about thirty minutes before showtime. So we are sitting at about an hour that you've known and you did not share. <laughs> so I yeah, we have beef. Um, now I haven't seen it. Now I have to watch it after the show because otherwise we'll get yeah, black we'll flagged it. and shit. We'll watch it post show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I forgot to turn uh, my lights on, so you have to give me a second here. I'm I'm doing a uh, oh man, I've been listening to so many uh, so much uh, podcast rodeo and how to shows and everything else. Like we're breaking all the rules right now. We had theme music. There's like apparently no theme music allowed. I just broke the fourth wall and acknowledged that I'm on a podcast by saying that I had to pause the <laughs> podcast to, to turn my red lights on because that's part of my production for my podcast. Like, man, th- this show, this show's off the rails, dude. We are, nobody does, nobody does comedy like we don't do it. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. That was, um, that was insightful. Thank right. you for providing your uh, life commentary there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, so, so how, how's the trailer? Was, more, more or less excited after watching it? Oh, because that's absolutely. that's really I'm, the only question that matters, right? Are you more or less excited? That's that's the only question that really matters out of a trailer. Yeah. No, and Steph and I just had this conversation actually yesterday that about trailers, like different philosophies on trailers. To me, it's I, I enjoy watching movie trailers to get that hype, hmm. and it's rare. Well. At least it's uncommon for a trailer to actually turn me around, like to not be looking forward to a movie if it's already something that I'm interested in. Hmm. Uh, one one notable exception was that that piece of shit Terminator movie that came out a couple years ago, Genesis. Oh yeah, they you know the major spoiler or the the major reveal in the movie was in the trailer. Yeah. Uh, what a load of shit. Uh, but other than that... <laughs> well, see, I, I got lucky on that because um, I didn't see the trailer before I went to watch the movie. I watched the movie opening night at the theater at Osan, so it was kind of like, a, well, there's nothing else going on on a Friday night, and I don't feel like going and getting Hammer Smash, so I might as well go watch a movie in this new you know, new Terminator movie's coming out. Cool, I'll go watch that. Went and watched it. Uh, then I saw the trailers afterwards, and I was like, man, that's uh, that, I'm glad I saw the movie before I saw the trailer, and now here it is two years later, and I have no idea what the movie was about. So I uh, like it's it's come full circle. Um, it's it's just overall good for me. I I can't recommend it, but because I can't remember it, so uh, right, call it a wash or call it a benefit because it only cost me seven bucks to get in instead of fifty bucks to go out and get drunk that night. So I, I guess it's a win yeah. for me. Yeah. Exactly. No, I'm I'm super hyped for Deadpool two. Uh, the trailer did a good job of uh, filling in some of the questions, like let you know that there's okay, there are other characters in Deadpool appearing in this. Hmm. Um, just it looks super exciting and hilarious as hell. Uh, now, can't wait. Deadpool, the first Deadpool, the 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 trailer, because there's only one major trailer for the movie. Like there's a couple little teasers here and there, but there's one major trailer. Okay. That trailer I thought was the most amazing trailer in the history of movies ever because it only gave you the stuff that was in the intro credits like it was basically the trailer was the credit the intro credit scene without the credits popping up and then yeah and then a, point. a few jokes that it had after that were actually cut scenes that didn't appear in the movie like the little jokes where he's you know they're, they're talking about how his face looks like 
uh, smash mashed potatoes and stuff like that. The jokes that they used in the trailer, they didn't end up using in the movie. Right. It was outtakes, basically. It, exactly. And so that was beautiful because the trailer didn't tell me shit, but it gave me so much that I knew I wanted to watch it. Yep. Yep. Pretty good. So, yeah, there we go. There, there's that. It, have you seen a movie lately, though? Um. Yeah, I did. What'd you see? Uh... I don't know if I can tell you about it. Um, well, see, that's interesting because I saw a movie this weekend, yeah. and uh, I, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure how much I should say about it. We, we, we need a waterfall. Is there a waterfall? <laughs> yeah. Does it? Does anyone have a waterfall available so we can go behind it and talk? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least a, a rushing stream or something. Um, so what do you think? Dude? I didn't realize how loud streams are actually. They're pretty damn loud, apparently. Oh, so I... Oh, my God. Okay, tell me your impression of the movie, because I have some things to say about it. All right, so I, we're talking about A Quiet Place. I do not want to give any spoilers. Oh, right, no, 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 spoiler-free. This is spoiler-free zone yeah, for now. Yeah, so just, just, general, just general thoughts on this movie. Um, so right off the bat, I super enjoyed it. I loved the hell out of it. I thought it was great. Uh, Jim from The Office apparently is a really talented director and a writer. Mm. We already knew he could, he could act. Uh, but yeah, he he could direct and write as well. Um, I thought the movie was executed very well. Of course, this is, I've only seen one trailer and it was actually a tre- teaser trailer from months ago. Um, mm. when I was, in fact, I was in the theater when I saw it and I was, I don't know how long ago that was. I think for oh shit, I couldn't even begin to guess. Um, I thought it was great. Uh, the story kept me interested. It kept me wondering what was going on. It gave me enough at the right times to to keep me interested. Without like I, I I'm one of those people that I can guess where the movie's going pretty early in the movie, typically, mm-hmm. and I could guess where the movie was going, but I didn't see how it was going to get there. And a couple of the twists right. and turns really. I didn't expect to happen when it happened, but when it happened, it felt natural. It didn't feel rushed or anything else. Um, can I talk a little bit about the audience that I experienced the movie with? Oh, that's what everyone's talking about is their actual experience uh, in the theater. It, uh, two things, two groups of people, the people that sat directly behind us and the people that sat to my left. My kids, all my kids sat to my right. It was, it was uh, Madison, Sterling, and David that, came, that went with me. So they all sat to my right, and there's a couple, a couple empty seats, and then, some, like, I don't know, like six or seven people that way. Okay. I want to talk about the people behind us first. I thought they were the loudest popcorn eaters in the fucking world. <laughs> Could have sworn. Out they were just eating popcorn. No, they weren't eating popcorn. They were eating red vines and pulling them out of the package one by one. So what I thought was them reaching their hand down into the popcorn and pulling it out was Uh, actually them just pulling the red vines out of the package. I kept wondering why I wasn't hearing the crunch of popcorn, but I kept hearing people reach into the fucking bag. Like, what were you (laughs) looking for in the bottom of the bag? Is there a damn little treat at the bottom of the bag that you keep digging for? What the hell is going on? They were eating red vines. (laughs) Loudest red vines package Fucking ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I had some Twizzlers, and um, I, at the very beginning of the movie, I realized how loud the plastic mm. was sounding, mm-hmm. and I like quickly just like ripped open the the bag completely and right. like, pulled the pulled the Twizzlers out. <laughs> yeah, no, the, they they pulled them out one by one, like through the same tiny little hole. So those was basically the twi- the the red vine rubbing against the plastic that I was hearing <laughs> the entire fucking movie. <laughs> that's not the worst part. That was the most distracting part, but that's not the worst part because the other part has a, has a, a a level of fucking ridiculous to it. Okay, as every good story should have. Um, w- w- when you go into a theater, what do you usually take with you? Um, my my beverages and and snacks from the from the snack bar. Okay, okay. Um, take a stub. I'm I'm assuming your your beverage is in one of the containers that they provide, because you you're not going to take your own mug in there and like fill my shit sure. up and and go drink. It. Um, how about your popcorn? What's your popcorn in? Uh, it's are either you, a bucket or a bag? Usually a bag. Actually. Usually a bag. You're you're a bag guy, not a bucket guy. 
Yeah, they. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got to get like the you got to pay like seven thousand dollars to get the the bucket, like the trash can sized bucket. Right. But see, when uh, you're when you're a family like we have, you buy the big ass bucket because you go back and get refills before the movie's even started, and it's free refills. So you go back and get like five refills, and then everybody's got like their hands full of fucking popcorn. It's all good. Okay. You know what they use beside me for their popcorn? Um, um, did, did they use a, like a, one of those wheeled cart popcorn machines? N- nope, nope, nope. Two, two, uh, 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 two related to the theater, two closely related to theater. <sighs> oh dear God. Like I, I, I can't even, I don't even want to try to guess anything else. What, what, what were they using? They were using a bag. Okay. Like a kitchen trash bag. Oh, with so just popcorn pretty- piled in there, and they continually pass this bag back and forth between the seven of them through the fucking movie. Ah. Uh. First of all, how do you get that much goddamn popcorn? Second of <laughs> all, it's called a quiet place. The only way I can think that you get that much popcorn in the theater is if you work there, and if you work there, then you know about the fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't a quiet place for me. It was a it was a distracting place. It was a that's that's what I'm, a, a, a distracting place. That's sad. That sucks. I, I actually so had a, a for the most part. I had a a fairly quiet audience. I I could hear popcorn chewing, the occasional like straw in the cup moving. Right. Uh, you know, just normal sounds. But everyone seemed to be like pretty intent on not making noise. Except all the way down in the front of the theater, probably like four rows back from the screen, there were three or four either preteen or very young teen girls. I'm guessing 13 or 14 years old. You're hoping 13 or 14 because let's face it, once you turn 40, you can't fucking tell anymore. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, These little girls were giggly. And mm. I like I actually kind of enjoy when a joke is told on screen and I share a laugh with my fellow audience members. It's right. kind of a communal thing. Right. right? Or, or or when there's a scream or there's a scare tactic on the screen and you're one of the people <gasps> yeah, with everybody else. Like the collect, yeah, yeah. Like the, the collective environment. You, yeah, or or a cheer, like you know, the bad guy finally goes down right. and yeah, yeah You're not one of those people that claps at the credits though, are you? No, God, I find that so fucking annoying. Yeah, it's like, like oh yeah, they, they're very appreciative, and they're obviously standing there bowing for you right, right now. Exactly, exactly. Like, there, there's <laughs> under no circumstances anyone gonna find out anything about you clapping for this fucking movie right now. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're just standing there, not letting me out of my fucking row. Like, can you just move? I'm trying to get yeah. out. I gotta pee. You're about to become the recipient. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, these little girls weren't just joining us in the communal enjoyment of this film. They Mm. found certain things funny that were not intended to be funny. Um, okay. Like, like like, in the film, they're not like, they're not responding to external stimulus. They're actually responding to the movie just in a, in a vastly inappropriate or unexpected way. Uh, as far as I could tell, but like I said, they were all the way down in front. We were like the middle of the upper deck kind of, I don't know, like five or six rows up from the uh, middle, I guess. In the center. Um, yeah. And I don't know. It was just, it was really annoying and awful when there would be either something scary or something um, uh, uh, disturbing. Mm. And then you just hear this, <laughs> like three in three voices. Like, oh, shut up. They, they, they weren't like, they didn't come in there with like, uh, uh, they weren't wearing the same outfit, were they? I, I don't know. I didn't pay that much attention to them. They, I don't know. They didn't ruin the movie. They, I only heard them probably, I don't know, three, four times during the movie. Hmm. I took note of them each time, but then quickly forgot them until the next time they made a sound. So hmm. I don't know. Otherwise, it was an incredibly enjoyable <laughs> movie experience. But I have one final question before we move past this movie. Okay. Is A Quiet Place a horror movie? Yes. Thank you. 
Yes. Period. Dot. End of story. <laughs> it, it, okay, um, I, I'm going I'm to try to save this without being spoilery. With, even without, or especially, I would say especially without the unexpected addition, let's just say that, that makes several okay. appearances. Even without that, and especially if it didn't have that, it is completely a horror movie. Absolutely. Okay. It's not about it's not about how it's it, how, the the subject matter. It's it necessarily it's about how you react to what you're seeing and hearing from the movie. In my opinion, but yeah, definitely a horror movie. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a little bit of both, and I think it qualifies as a horror movie, no matter which one you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I don't. If you disagree, uh, fight me. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at rm underscore del no shake. <laughs> yeah. I actually got into a Twitter fight with Owen earlier in the week about that. Oh yeah. Uh, Owen, as in Odocta. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Go to go over to rm underscore del noche on Twitter and and uh, you can read about it. That tells you what kind of busy week I've been having since I didn't catch that. <laughs> um, we are now twelve point three four, so one one two point three four percent of the way towards the pants no pants. Uh, decision. So if you want to, if you're in the chat room, you want to throw some bits our way. Uh, if you're not watching us live right now, you're missing out on the whole pants off dance off. Um, <laughs> hey, I'll let you decide if that's a good thing or not. Hey, uh, since we're talking about movies, let's go ahead and cut to this real quick. Welcome to your BT Movie Grab Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of April 16, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. I'm just one stomach flew away from my goal weight in 1992. Let's go to the scoreboard. Teams have a drink. The VOD Squad and Walking Drunker Tide still waiting for their first film. Team Movie Party's in third place with $39.5 million. Team Game Night, with Ready Player One bringing in over $11.5 million this past weekend, is in second place with $117 million. And with Truth or Dare, Rampage, and A Quiet Place combined, Team Ritual Misery is in first place with a sizable $168.4 million. That's your movie draft minute for the week of April 16, 2018. All totals are as of 6 p.m. Central, Wednesday the 18th. I just want to point out that we had two movies come out this weekend, and those two movies together didn't add up to the second week sales of our previous movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, A Quiet Place is raking in the dough for us, man. Yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, I was expecting it to be a good movie. I was not expecting it to be a money maker. Yeah, we're and we and right. we got it for steal compared compared to some of these other movies, which is yeah. good oh, because yeah, we got ripped off on pretty much everything else we bought. So we yeah, we paid 14, 14 game bucks for that. That's nothing for for what it's making right now. Oh yeah, insane. it's it's what 10, 10, 10 per something like that. It's insane. Yeah, I, dude, I think it's I, I think this. Um, I think that's going to be the buy of the game. Like there's, there's, I don't doubt it at all. It it's, is going it, to be the, the biggest value. It is clearly not going to be enough to save us, but it's definitely the buy of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. We're going to finish out the season with mission impossible uh, Those movies. I mean, you know, for, for better or worse. I mean, they, they do draw money. So. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. It, it, actually, I saw, I saw the, uh, the, the trailer for that and skyscraper for while is that a quiet place. And both of them actually looked pretty good. So, yeah, I mean, I do have movie pass now. So I, I'll speaking probably... of movie pass. <sighs> oh, my God. So I went to sign up on Monday. Oh, God. Uh, uh-huh. like, like, no shit. I went to sign up on Monday. I went to moviepass.com. I, I finally got the site to work to show me what theaters in my area are, are, are working with it. And the one right down the street showed up on the map. Finally. So I was going to buy, and no, uh, it, they they jacked. Uh, the, the, I don't even know. I don't even know how to explain. Uh, I like the way Tom Merritt explained it on uh, Cord Killers this week. He said, uh, "Movie Pass couldn't keep doing the seven dollars a month thing, so they had to think think of some crazy deal to go on for a few months. And once that's over, it'll be back to the ten dollars a month thing. Which I mean, it's still the deal. It's still a steal if you go to more more than one movie a month, or if you live in yeah. California where it's like fifteen bucks a ticket, but." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was upset by that because apparently I missed the cutoff by like a couple hours. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, actually, I think they changed it on Friday. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, and I, I found out about it through Cord Killers because, no kidding, earlier in the day on Monday or Tuesday. No, I was listening to Cord Killers on Tuesday. Hmm. Tuesday, before I had listened to the show, I had told Steph, I was like, hey, I want to get Lucas an early birthday present. I want to I want to buy him a movie pass. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, hell yeah, that sounds that's perfect. Do it. So on my drive home from work that evening, I, I listened to the episode of Court Killers and they were talking about that. I almost fucking like drove off the road. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. So I get home and I looked it up, to, looked up the deal, and I was like, "You got to be fucking kidding me!" For those that don't know what we're talking about, Movie Pass. I I, I got Movie Pass, uh, what two weeks ago, something yeah. like that. I paid, I think it was seven ninety five a the, month, six ninety five a month. Six well, ninety five. It came. Out, it comes out to. Now we're arguing on the show. It came out to like eighty nine dollars a year or whatever it came out to. Yes, correct. Yeah, because you had to you had to buy an annual thing, right? So I paid for an entire year. And it so it comes out to roughly like seven bucks a month, and it's a movie a day. I can go to a movie every single day for that year. So that's like three hundred and sixty-five movies that I got for the price of like five movies. Well, more than that, but or two uh, if you're in California. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they changed the deal so that it's now you pay a three-month subscription at nine ninety-five. And you only get four movies in that month. Oh, and also you get a, a fucking um, iHeartRadio premium subscription for that three months. Who gives a fuck about that? It's the movie. Uh, anyway, it's still it, it's still a deal. Mm. If you go to four movies for that price, it's still a deal. However. If it's gonna, if this is gonna be like a two week long promotion, and then it's gonna go back to the like the deal that I got, or even the same deal but at nine ninety five, I would rather wait the few weeks to do that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, clearly. Because besides, yeah. look, the reason I listen to podcasts is because radio sucks so bad. Why am I gonna pay for premium radio? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, and so the, the God. So I went to the <laughs> to the website, the FAQ, to mm-hmm. see if I could figure out like how know, long, is this, yeah, how long is, is this gonna go, shit like that. So I found, I found, I was like, all right, I found the FAQ for it. How long will this new membership plan be offered? I was like, oh, pff, I'm about to get my answer. Their answer to that question is, the new membership plan will be offered for a limited time. Right. Fuck off. Like I'm. Uh, I'm just I'm agitated. I don't know why I'm mad at them for giving me a good deal and then giving a less good but still really fucking great deal to my kid. Like, how am I mad about that? Like, that's like the it's like most. When you, when, you, when you hear, awful. yeah, when you hear it's free to get in, and then you get there and it's like twenty cents, and you're like, oh fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it's normally like three hundred dollars. Yeah, twenty cents. Ah. I wasn't going to pay $300. Why would I pay 20 cents, man? I was here for the free tickets. Yeah. At, oh. I don't know, man. I just I wish they were clear with how long this thing is going to go, what they're going to change to after the fact. Um, it's it's just frustrating. It's aggravating. And I'm I'm just I'm a spoiled brat and I'm I'm pouting about it. Yeah. Media, <laughs> Media King says uh, it's a, it's more like Spotify, not, not radio. It lets you build an entire station based off one song or artist, but I'm already paying for Apple Music. Sure. And Apple Music is $15 a month for six people. Yeah. That, that and all use it on a regular basis. Amazon, Amazon Music is close to the same thing as Apple Music, but not as extensive uh, catalog wise and, and um, customization wise, I guess. But it's basically the same thing. And that comes with Amazon Prime account. Who doesn't have. Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. so, eh, I don't know. I yeah, I'm I'm a cheapskate. Like I I like, I like paying, for something once and leaving it alone. So like I'm good with paying eighty five bucks for a movie pass because then, I don't ever have to pay for another movie for the rest of the year. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> we're so fucking spoiled, dude. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyway, Let us continue up? with our uh, with our white people uh, white people rich problems. What what else have we got going on? <laughs> um, 
I, I got something. Uh, I, I wasn't planning on talking about this because it just happened yesterday. Uh huh. I got a new lens for my camera. Ah. This is my first L series lens, which is Canon's professional level lens. Um, which is actually why I was so insistent on going to the soccer game today because I was actually taking some pictures. Oh, right on. Um, happened yesterday. Best Buy had a. You know, I hate I hate credit cards, but I love uh, uh, interest free financing because there's always uh, like I never overextend my interest free financing period, right? So Best Buy made the mistake of going one year uh, interest free on that, so I went ahead and made the mistake of buying it. Um, <clears throat> and th it's it, the thing is amazing. Like my best lens right now, be, well before this was a 50 millimeter 1.4 uh, f 1.4 lens. Prime lens, we didn't zoom or anything else. And a lot of times, like, either you, it was not close enough or just way too close. Um, this is a 2.8, so it's got, it, it lets half the light in. See, this this is how we do this show. I'm just totally geeking out on much shit that Ken doesn't understand about, but he's not going to ask me questions. He's just going to let me keep talking. Um, so it lets half the light into the lens, but it's a 70 to 200. So I can actually, like, reach out there and, and, and you know, get it. Um, my previous zoom lens for, was a 28 to 135, which is pretty good, but it, it F down to 3.5. But as soon as you started zooming in, it went up to 4. Point, uh, what, 4.4, 4.2, whatever. And it was pretty soon at 5.6 and at 5.6, you're not letting in a whole lot of light for like indoor photography, especially if you're doing sports. So this stays at 2.8 the entire time. It's amazing. And it cost a goddamn pretty penny, but uh, I've got something to pay off for the next year because I didn't get a whole lot of birthday presents this year. So I consider it my birthday present to myself. So uh, fight me. And um, it's, oh my God, it's so gorgeous. Like at a 2.8 aperture to reach out at, at 200 millimeters and be able to take like a picture of somebody, especially family, because I like taking pictures of the family when they don't know I have my camera out. And you can't do that if you're right up on them trying to get a, trying to get a, a, a picture at a 50 mil. Um, but with that 200, man, I, I can be, I can stand here at the door of my office and take a picture of somebody watching TV in the living room and it, the, their face fills the, the, fills the entire frame and it's a 2.8. So it's very shallow depth of field. So you get like this nice bokeh behind them and yeah, you can do it just by the light of the TV. And I know I'm totally geeking out about photography right now, but I fucking love it. it the, the lens is amazing. It's the lens that I've been wanting the longest and it's like the one lens that every photographer has to get. Uh, eventually, if they're ever going to do anything with their photography, and I fucking have it, and it's beautiful. It's my pride and joy. It's now my most most prized possession. I'm I'm happy for you, man. Uh, I bet that was expensive. And if anyone wants to help Amos pay for that expensive ass <laughs> lens, they can head over to Patreon.com/slash <laughs> Ritual Misery. <laughs> uh, um, no, that's that's pretty great. Um, uh, you have no idea what I, I was just I, talking about, do you? Like it just like completely it, passed right past you. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say. I, I wish I had questions to ask or things to say, like comments. Uh, like, well, that sounds that sounds swell. <laughs> 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 oh, geez. Um, I really, I only have one more story that I wanted to bring up. Uh, so you and I are airmen. You are active duty for mm -hmm. at least a little while longer. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. retired a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but something that we had to do over our 20 and 20 plus year careers, something that we had to do periodically was re-enlist. Right. Every because four to six was, years. On so it, an enlistment is basically a contract. Mm -hmm. So my initial, actually yours as well, the initial contract or initial enlistment was four years. And then from that point, you can kind of choose it's like a, a four year, six year. Uh, sometimes there's a two year, or three year. It just depends on your situation, the timing and everything else. Uh, but typically four years and six years are the, the common lengths of time. Uh, so we had to do it several times over the course of our careers. And it's just like anything else in the military. We have a ceremony that goes with it. It's very formal. It's it's. Um, it's laid out exactly the way it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. You have to have a flag in the room standing mm -hmm. behind you. You have to have an officer with you. You, there are very specific words that you have to say. You have yep. to have your right hand raised because um, you're you're swearing an oath. So, and that's how that works. 
And if you're in the National Guard, you have to have the state flag as well as the federal flag, the, the Stars and Stripes. Correct, because there, there are some words added. So ours mm-hmm. says uh, about obeying the orders of the president and the officers appointed above me or over me, yep. something like that. And they add on – they say that. And the governor. And the governor of the great state of whatever. Or I don't think they say great state, but hmm. the governor of the state of fill in the blank. Right. Or the Commonwealth of – it varies by you know, whatever it considers sure. itself. But, yeah, it, that's added in there because they are more responsible to the governor than they are the president. They're only responsible to the president in times of national emergency. Yep. So. Yep. So why did we bring <clears throat> this up? <laughs> now, why uh, oh, okay, this? so so there's there have been times, and I'm sure – I'm sure you've seen this as well. Like I've seen reenlistments done on like a, in a C-17 in, in mop four chem gear. Oh yeah. Sure. You sure. know, or, or reenlistments done in blues or ABUs or BDUs back in the day. Even, even the green fatigues, like the last day that you were allowed to wear the green fatigues, I saw someone get reenlisted in the green fatigues because it was their last enlistment. And they didn't want to do it in BDUs. Yeah. Like uh, there, there's some variance to the things that you can do. Within the realm of the military world. Sure, sure. Um, uh, you can do it in an office. You can do it on a plane. You can do it on the flight line. You can do it. Uh, I've seen it done in mop gear. That's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, could you do it in like a clown mask? No. Would that No? No. Oh. Although I, 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 did, I did see it get done in a Deadpool outfit at the Deadpool premiere on Osan. But apparently it was just a mock-up and they went ahead and redid it like immediately afterwards in uniform. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So, but but it wouldn't be appropriate to do like your actual enlistment ceremony or reenlistment ceremony in the Deadpool costume. No, 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 not not appropriate at all because you're not in uniform. Okay. Uh, what if you wanted to like um, um, use a funny voice and say the oath backwards? No, no, because it has to be it has to be said. You could use a funny voice. There's, I mean, technically nothing wrong with that, but you okay. have to you have to say it in the order in which it's it's laid out in the yeah. In but the I mean, okay, but it would be probably inappropriate to the situation, right? If you were obviously using a, a silly voice, right? Right? Yeah. I mean, you you wouldn't you couldn't do it on helium. Yeah. So what we're talking about is a video recently went viral, uh, at least in military channels uh, or channels circles. Um, this was on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure exactly the origin. I don't know who actually posted this. Uh, someone in the room, though. I mean, eventually got out. Yeah. Well, the person filming it was actually the first sergeant. So I don't know. If really? I didn't see that part. Act, the one that, that posted this. I don't know. But it, this is a National Guard in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. This master sergeant was re-enlisting, and the colonel was providing the um the officer role Mm -hmm. the the one actually officiating the ceremony right um and the the thing about this is that she had a dinosaur puppet on her right hand and she's mouthing the words uh through the puppet and uh, she's not like trying to she's not ventriloquizing ventriloquizing yeah i mean she's she's saying the oath and she's not she's not using a silly voice or anything she's saying the oath but instead of just Having her right hand raised, right. she has a a sock puppet on her hand, and mouthing the words along with her own speech. Right. Um. I, I, I. Okay, so let's just get to the. I mean, cut to the chase here. She got fired. Um. um the colonel yeah. and her were both removed from whatever positions they had. Uh, blah 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 blah. Uh, the colonel was demoted and forced to retire. Nice, that's beautiful. The um, master sergeant was, I believe, kicked out of the Air National Guard. I the first sergeant who filmed this yeah. was moved from his first sergeant duties. He is still in the Air Force, but is no longer a first sergeant. So he, he got his diamond stripped. Um, yeah. I don't know why this incensed me so much that I had to share it with my wife. Like, I I don't know why, in particular, I could not just let this roll, whatever, they'll get what they want, who gives a shit, I'm moving on with my life. I don't know why I had to share this with my wife and a couple of the military members. I think I might even have shared it with you on Facebook, but you never checked Facebook anyway. Um, <laughs> but it pissed me off. And what, I'm... I'm what, what, what? I'm not really, I don't know really know why it pissed me off as bad as it did, but it did. It, it really, really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. 
Um, now, is it more the like the the idea that someone would use a, a puppet during their ceremony? I don't. Or, I, I don't know. It, it just seems like they were mo- making a mockery of the whole thing, in which that that I didn't feel the same when they were doing the 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 the, the literal mock of it in the Deadpool outfit. At you know, I don't. I don't know why this bothers me so much. Well, and here here's my thing. Uh, so this has been made a big deal. Everybody has a very strong opinion. Well, not everybody, but the vast majority of folks, at least people that that leave comments on the video or the, or articles written about it have a very strong opinion one way or the other. Mm. People are either, you know, fuck them. They should burn. How dare they desecrate this, this ceremony. And then you've got people on the, the far side, like, yeah, okay, whatever. But really was that, is that worth costing people's careers? Um, blah, blah, blah. Um, to me, like, I don't have enough information here because Let's say that someone filmed that Deadpool reenlistment, right, and put it on the internet. Uh, that to me seems a hell of a lot more egregious than this. Mm. Uh, we don't know if this was the official ceremony. This could have been a practice run through. Um, I read somewhere that the the lady, the the master sergeant, said that she was recording a special version of it for her kids to watch. Um, a bunch of different things. Most of it just speculatory. But the thing is. We honestly have no fucking idea what we're watching. This Mm. is provided with zero context. The video is 50 seconds long, so it's basically the the length of the reading of the oath. And that's it. We get nothing before it, nothing after it. Uh, And then there's not, like, we're not even zoomed out. We don't know. I mean, it looks like it's in a conference room or something like that, maybe. But we don't know where they are and what's going on. Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you the reason I thought the Deadpool thing was a safe space is because one, it was it was at a Deadpool like event. Like every there were there were literally hundreds of people there. Most of I won't say most, many of them in costume. But both participants were in costume. They were not like their faces were covered. Their they didn't they were not wearing a uniform. They were not wearing rank or anything else. It was basically sure. it could have been any two schmucks up there sure, doing sure. it. Right, right, right. So my biggest problem, even if with, you had filmed it, it would have been completely anonymous. Would you just like like two schmucks doing an oath? Yeah. My biggest problem with this is that it it ended up on the internet. Well, first we wouldn't fucking know anything about this if it wasn't on the internet, right? Uh, but I think that is the problem. It's not that this occurred what in whatever context that it is because we have no idea. That's not the problem. The problem is that it's on the fucking internet and we're all looking at it. I'm not so sure that it, that removing people from their careers over this is necessarily the right response. Uh, do I think this was like, this is okay. This is dignifying to the ceremony. No, I think it's kind of fucked up, but how many times in our careers or just your career, how many times in your career have you done something even in uniform that while silly fun in the moment would become problematic if someone had posted a video of that moment on the internet, mm. especially not in context with what was actually happening there. I would um, say, I would say I'd be, I'm hard pressed to think of anyone who doesn't have at least a few moments like that. And this might be one of those moments that it would be fucking fine. This was just a mock up run through something innocent, something or another, or just some silly, whatever the fuck it was. Right. Uh, because honestly, the only thing that legally fucking matters with a reenlistment is your and the officer's signature on that fucking form. <clears throat> True. That's really all that matters. So had there not been video of this, this is a not 100% non-issue, completely 100% non-issue. Right. So is this worth their career, demoting the colonel and forcing him to retire and then kicking her out of the military and stripping a diamond from a shirt? Like, what the fuck? So my thing is, not only do we not know the context of the, the video and the situation, we also don't know the framework of, like, the punishments. Like, we don't understand the reasoning for the for that decision being made. If it's just a, a woman standing there with a sock puppet on her hand, that seems a little extreme. So I'm thinking that there's something else going on here that we just... Everybody's raising a stink about shit, j- just like normal. Everybody's raising a stink about shit that they really don't know anything about. 
Um, <clears throat> I mean, fair enough, but really what it comes down to is they're Air National Guard, so they're not even real military. <laughs> <laughs> Air Force light. <laughs> Uh, I, I know I can catch all the shit in the world for, for the weekend warrior jokes that I really don't give a shit. Like I've already had this come at me, bro. Um, when, I, when I was deployed, when I would go on a deployment to Prince Sultan Air Base, we were there for like four months and we would get people from the National Guard come in for two weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah, they'd also be like uh, 54 year old staff sergeants. <laughs> right. Um, so, so here's 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 my here's my opinion on all that. You have your outliers. You have your pieces of shit on active duty. You have your heroes uh, that, that only come in one weekend a month, uh, two weeks a year. Um, in my experience, working uh, w- with the, th- the, three, the three versions of the Air Force, you got the, the Air National Guard, the Air Force Reserve, and then the Air Force. Um, I will work with active duty over reservists, over guard every single day. Um, and I think and, that's mostly. Well, for for me, it's mostly because there's different rules. They're following different rules. They're not playing by the same rules. Right. They're playing by Title Ten, Title Six, VI, Title Thirty Two, Title whatever, whatever, whatever. They're not right. playing by the same rules, so you can't hold everybody to the same standard. And what happens is you hold the active duty to a higher standard. And if I'm going to be held to a higher standard, I want to be working with people that are held to that same standard. Yeah, and see, for me, it's 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 almost exclusively because I, I'm with you. I agree. But for me, it's almost exclusively the the likeness of the, um, uh, you know, like you said, different rules for different groups. Uh, it's not necessarily a higher or lower standard in most cases, especially when it comes to the the on the job things. Like if if it's a maintenance task that you need to perform, the active duty guy and the guard guy have to perform that task at the same standard. Right. There but the is- guard guy goes home at four o'clock and the active duty guy sticks around and looks for the lost tool. See, that's odd. That's I have not encountered that. I've always, the guard guy would still stay, help us find the tool. He wouldn't stay in country more than two weeks, but <laughs> but he'd stay three hours past his shift. Uh, mm-hmm, not unless he was getting comp that week. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, all right. But but to me, it was mo- it was basically just the different rules, the different standards. It's not because well, that guy sucks and our guys are obviously better. Right. Because but it's just like you said. There's there's pieces of shit on active duty and there's like superheroes in guard and reserve uh, and you know, all types in all, all forms. It, it, so. it, I, I would, I would, I would say it's akin to um, if you're a professional baseball player and you're held to a certain standard on the field and you're playing against peewee league, there's a different, different standard. It's the same game, mm. but, okay. but there's different rules that apply. The, their bases are shorter, you know, um, they're using T-ball instead of using a uh, 103 mile an hour pitch. <laughs> but that's, you know, it's a different, it's, it's the same game, but it's, it's a total uh, different no, version of it. That's horse shit. We're both putting F-16s in the sky. That same TOs, the same safety standards. That's not even the same thing. <laughs> it totally is. You're being shot at by the same MIGs and the same SAMs. It's the same rules. Right. Two weeks a year. They're getting shot by the same people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> We're, well, uh, sorry, Ahmed. Uh, we need to bring out the, uh, the the less quality SAM site today because because we have guard F-16s flying over. So we have to play on a on a fair playing field with them. Hmm. They flew today. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, they man, only, I they, hope he gets the feedback. From they some they, 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 they can only fly morning sorties because they got to be home by four. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, next week we should have Lienzo with us, so uh, we won't. It just won't be <laughs> me and Kent bullshitting at each other for an hour. <gasps> Yeah, these are the indie game devs that we have hyped the hell out of for the last, what, two years, three years? And rescheduled, like, I don't know how many times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've been our guests a couple times already, uh, but we've recently had to reschedule them twice. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they made the award-winning game Mulaka. It is finally released as of a couple months ago. Mm. And uh, we want to bring them on and uh, get their thoughts and feelings about actually publishing a, a hit game. 
uh, it's going to be awesome, man. Those yeah. guys are great. Um, and uh, if you if you haven't played it yet, go go out and play Malaka. Uh, it's really easy. M U L A K A. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you see that happen? Like right there, oh, like my blood sugar dipped. In real was like, time. Uh, but yeah, no, it's great, and it's it's pretty much platform agnostic. It's on it's on all the things. Yeah, uh, except for Mac, I think. But whatever. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, all right. If you're if you're Mac. on a Mac and you're expecting to play games on the Mac, you're doing Mac wrong. Well, um, I actually bought my Mac, my original Mac that I bought. I bought it because my my Windows laptop took a shit from playing StarCraft Two, and I bought. I I was like, all right, it's time to get a Mac. I'm pretty much done with Windows systems anyway, and I was okay buying a Mac because my StarCraft Two disc worked on Windows. Or uh, yeah, Windows or Mac. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically, my first use for a Mac was gaming. Mm. I was okay with buying a Mac because Civilization Five came out on Mac. Yeah. So uh, point moot. Yeah. Yeah. No. no you're, you're... <laughs> but other than Mac, <laughs> it's pretty much on everything, <laughs> to include the Nintendo Switch. Oh shit! Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you can go find those people. Just go look up Mulaka. And we are uh, running out of time. We've only got about eight thousand bits to go for uh, for the decision to be made for the pants off dance off for next week. I think we'll just keep going. I, just, I think we'll just keep it going. And uh, as soon as we hit nine thousand, yeah, just have it keep can keep rolling yeah. on through. Then we can just yeah, we can make a new contest for every nine thousand or something like that. Oh, there you go. Uh, next one, you put a uh, sock on your head. <laughs> Uh, okay. A lot of us have been winning that for a long time. <laughs> Where can people find you, man? Uh, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Pretty much everywhere else, I'm Del Noche or Del Noche seventy seven. Check me out. Um, well, you got anything in the uh in 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 the in the hopper things that are they're going on? Going to be released soon? Um, like like, uh, like another podcast? Yeah. Um, um, maybe. Can we talk about that yet? Uh, Sassian and I... It's only have been, been in the works for like two years. <laughs> uh, something like that. Uh, Sassian and I are, have been working on a little show called Blue Box Travelers. It's a Doctor Who podcast where we go back to the original 1963 season one of Doctor Who. And uh, it's basically a fan cast going through... Our, uh, basically a recap, uh, thoughts about the show, some production notes, come, pretty much every fan cast. Mm. Kind of like, let's talk about Thrones. That uh, we- yeah, that's that's in the works. Uh, that's that's a lot of fun, and we're finally all. Oh, uh, well, I think I think the long the long uh, hiatus uh, between episodes might be over, and we might be able to start cranking them out on a regular basis again. Um, yeah, well, a new episode actually just came out this week. It did. It did. Uh, this one was uh, 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 Sans Jenny. Um, she was uh, uh, silent during the, the entire episode, so that was unfortunate for her. But uh, me and Richard, uh, we held out and made it made it happen. Yeah, it was a good show. It, it was. It was fun. Uh, it was a lot of fun editing. If you watch, follow my Twitter at Ethan Kane on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Very nice. It, baby. it only took three uh, three days to to edit that episode. Um, yeah, so lots of fun. And last week, uh, oh my gosh, so we got to talk, talk about that during the post show, but yeah, last week was a lot of fun on this show trying to get it edited as well. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery. Um, and everything else, everything, everything you need to know about the show, period dot in a story is at ritualmisery.com. Support the show, contact the show, be on the show, uh, rate the show, uh, subscribe to the show, all the things about the show. RitualMisery.com uh, for everything. For all of our shows, actually. Uh, even the shows we don't do anymore. They're all still there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. <laughs> um, and so that's it. And uh, we are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash RitualMisery. And, of course, those links are also at RitualMisery.com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music because uh, it is it is, in fact, your music, and we are using it. So thank you. And we want to give a loud shout out to, uh, to, uh, uh, yeah, we'll do that here in a second. Uh, thank you. And, uh, for me, for Kent and for you, this has been your ritual misery podcast. See ya. Uh, 
M Beam has uh, given us one bit about fifty times. <laughs> Dude's gone wild. It has resubscribed again. We appreciate that. Uh, B Coford. Oh, here comes some more, some more, some more bits and cheers. Uh, Deuce gone wild with another another. Uh, uh, Fist Jam has, jo- uh, has hosted this crew. Followed us. He'll be here's a bit. Here's a bit. I can't. I can't. I can't auctioneer. That's just bad. <laughs> How about we just do this and call it a day? Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Everybody needs to head over to rmp.showbot.tv. Oh, not Showbot. Yeah, Showbot. Jesus. 